let us get started. Uh, Howard, you you on first, so you you get you get to ask the question first. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. I'm I'm rel relatively new to the group. Uh, we know each other from way back from the NYU days. Okay. Yes, that's right. And, that's right. And there's uh, there was one other talk that we were together. You spoke in front of a conservative group at a restaurant in New York City a long time ago. If you remember, that is a long time ago. Tea yeah, party days. Time. Those were the tea party the days. The tea party days. That's correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. So so strategically. What's the what's the IDF next move? And, and, and even more curiously, uh, I have more curiosity surrounding M Mossad and dealing with uh, the these bad actors that are in Qatar. Yeah. Uh, how, how would that? How would the Mossad handle that? Uh, how are they going to handle that now? I mean, it's not like the Black September days where they were able to hunt those guys down. Uh, all throughout Europe, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and 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 nowadays it, it, it's almost uh, it, it's almost a capitulation. I, I mean, to to see them actually sending Mossad uh, personnel over there to actually be part of the negotiation, unless there's some other plan that we don't know about. I'm I'm very very confused by that whole thing. Yeah. So. Uh... I don't think there's a plan to assassinate the leaders of Hamas and Qatar. I think those guys are going to die of old age, unfortunately. I, I don't think the Mossad is planning to kill them. Um, let's hope that there is no Hamas for them to be heads of okay. um, in, in a while. But I don't see Israel uh, going into Qatar and killing them. Now, maybe... If they travel to Europe, maybe if they go somewhere else, maybe Israel gets a shot at them. But I, I just don't think it's a priority. I, I, gone are the days of Israel hunting down its enemies and destroying them one by one. Uh, those are the old uh, the old days in the in the 70s and 80s when Israel did that. I just don't see the will to do that anymore. Uh, I, I, it, it's Israel's driven by. A very different moral code. It's driven by a different set of parameters. It just doesn't do stuff like that. It did. They did kill a uh, Hamas operative in Dubai. I think it was in Dubai a few years ago. It was it ten years ago or so? In a in a pretty sophisticated mission. But then when all the details went out and and they got criticized and they even got criticized inside of Israel, um, it, it, you know, I don't know that they are willing to do that. Remember also the Qatar, even though it's an enemy of Israel, an enemy of the United States, in my view, is also protected by the United States. It is an ally of the United States. The United States has its largest Middle East uh, military base in Qatar. It, it, the United States has CENTCOM. The, the, the operations for all the Middle East is in Qatar. Uh, and even though Qatar is aligned with Iran and is an enemy of the U.S. and funded ISIS and funded Al Qaeda and funds Hamas, the U.S. still plays this ridiculous game of being nice to its enemies and oh, more than nice, protecting them. And I just don't think Israel has the willpower to um, uh, go to Qatar with its being protected by the, by the U.S. and and execute a couple of guys in the middle of Qatar. I just don't see it happening, sadly. I wish I was wrong. I, you know, if you, it was up to me, there'd be a there'd be a, a a a cruise missile on the way to the hotel where these guys are staying right now, and it would be rubble. It, 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 it's Qatar. It, it's sunny yeah. though. To speak uh, towards the microphone, otherwise, otherwise, it's go ahead. Uh, is Qatar? Uh, is sunny though? It's mixed well, because it's mixed. you know a lot of that part of the world is mixed. Saudi Arabia has a significant minorities of Shiite. I think really? Qatar, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, most of Eastern Saudi Arabia are Shiite. It's actually where oil is, is actually mostly Shiite. Um, and, uh, you know, in the Gulf states, it's a combination of Shiite and Sunni. Qatar is very much aligned with Iran. Okay. Um, is It's it's the one, this is part of the negotiation. It's not that Qatar is negotiating with the United States. It's Iran is negotiating with the United States through, oh, with Israel, through the Qataris. The Qataris are just middlemen representing right. the Iranian regime. So, uh, 
Uh, no, I mean, this is, uh, Qatar, unfortunately, has a lot of power here because of its uh, connection with the United States. Mm. All right, thanks, Howard. Uh, can you mute yourself just uh, yes. while we go through and then? Uh, Amlan. Yeah, hi, uh, Yaron. Um, hey. Actually, this is going to be my second question, but it, it's I think it's directly connected to what Howard just asked. So let me let yeah. me ask this now. Um, I guess, you know, when I when I look at how Israel has acted or not acted or, you know, like all, all the things you've talked about and, and so forth. I, I mean, at what point do you start to get kind of like want to throw your hands up and say, look, you know, these, these guys just don't want to do what needs to be done and to protect themselves. And they, they keep repeating the same mistakes, if not making it worse every time. Um, you know, like, like I was mad, mad as hell when, when those attacks happen and the brutality of them. And, and same thing with nine 11, right. It's like, you know, what the hell, you know, like, why, why are we putting up with this nonsense and all those things? And then it's just like, you know, it's like we don't seem to do anything. And I guess I guess at what point do you just say, like, OK, Israel, like, you know what? You guys are you guys are kind of a lost cause. And, and I, you know, I know you talked about this a lot yesterday in your show. So I did. I did see that one. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, and I fully understand the benefit to us of supporting Israel. But then Israel's not doing what needs to be done. Like, unlike Ukraine, where you can at least say, OK, they're doing, I think, what the best they can do. But what about Israel? <laughs> yeah, and uh, but a big part of the frustration with Ukraine is is America is not doing what it can do. Yeah, yeah, and and, and even with Israel, America is not doing what it can do. So, uh, look, I threw my hands up. I don't know, 1982, I think. Okay, uh, you know, when I was in Beirut, and and uh, and Ronald Reagan saved Yasser Arafat's butt, and uh, basically Israel was about to do the right thing. It was about to go into West Beirut, kill Arafat and killed 6,000 of his troops. And Ronald Reagan stepped in and said, I guarantee safe passage to Yasser Arafat and his people to, and they got on boats to Tunisia. I mean, and that was Ronald Reagan, right? The last president that at least made a good speech. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I gave up a long time ago. It's not that at any point do I expect the United States or Israel or anybody for that matter to do the right thing. The primary purpose of my ranting is educational. It's <laughs> it's to educate the world about what should be the right thing, so that someday, one day, maybe somebody will be influenced and 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 uh, and and make a change. But my expectation is not that that happens. Probably in my lifetime, it doesn't happen. Uh, the reality is that yeah, th this stuff is going to keep going. This real politique, this compromising this amoral way of fighting wars is going to continue. Israel will suffer. America will suffer. Europe will suffer. Everybody will suffer. It might even lead to the collapse of Western civilization. That is what's at stake at the end of the day. It could lead to that. I hope if that happens, it happens after I'm dead because I don't want to see it. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, I'm, I'm completely, it's not, it, you know, I've completely accepted the fact that, nobody is going to behave the way they're supposed to behave. I mean, it's the same thing with economics, right? I mean, yeah. the, the financial crisis happens. Everybody blames it on capitalism. And, I, you know, me and a few others are the lone voices saying, no, 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 wait a minute. Uh, you know, I, when do you throw up your hands? Well, you they've been up for a long, long time. My purpose is not to change Washington, D.C. or Jerusalem. My purpose is to, is to use this as a means to educate people about morality, about what is possible about what should be the behavior so the future generations maybe will pick up on it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, uh, I was going to say delusional, but maybe it's delusional, delusional enough to think that I have any impact that anybody's actually listening and that, that, uh, you know, this is going to change, uh, it, that anything will change. It's not, it, that's the reality. It's not. And it's sad. And it's part yeah. of my frustration and sadness is that it's not people are dying for no reason. A lot of people are going to die for no reason. You're I mean, on. People about Bibi Netanyahu for 25 years. Nobody yeah. listens to me. It, it just is what it is. And, and you just have to accept yeah. it. And uh, as we always say, it's one mind at a time. And if we can affect one mind at a time, and if this is the issue that gets somebody to listen to the show, or this is the issue that ultimately gets them to read Ayn Rand, great. Then, then I've I've achieved what I set out to do.
Yeah. Well, I, that's that's great that you're doing that, and of course, you know, that's why I support it. And but it's 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 hard not to be like really angry sometimes. I I know a few oh, years yeah. ago we were we were traveling through Scotland, and you know, we stopped at one of these memorials. And it was in the town. It was for the soldiers who had died in Iraq, you know. And I looked at that list, and I'm like, I I got so angry. Like I didn't know these people or anything, but it's just like, what a waste, right? Like yep. young men and women, and just their whole lives ahead of them, and just dying for for useless uh, nothing, you know. In fact, yep. dying for a step back on top of everything. So you know, I'm I'm happy you're doing it, and you know, but it is tough sometimes no i am with you completely yeah. it is it is very tough sometimes it, it angers me to no end you know on october 7th it was like i told you this was going to happen yeah and it doesn't help anybody for me to say that it, it's meaningless in the end yeah but it's it's super frustrating and it's it it makes me you know the ceasefire whatever it makes me super angry because i know all the lives that are going to be forfeited because of they're doing this yeah. stuff and uh it seems sometimes that nobody seems to care about human life. Yeah. Right? It's just yeah. No, I remember during the Iraq war, I mean, I was like, I, I, I gave a talk at Ocon and, and I was, I was furious. And I, ba you know, and I basically said, if this is how you're going to fight the war, if this is what it's about, then please bring the troops home today. Yeah. Why are these kids dying? What are they dying for? And there's nothing more infuriating than to see our politicians just and our leaders and our intellectuals just not care about young people um, dying because of this stupid, um, this stupid, uh, you know, decisions and and um, and attitudes. But yeah. you know, like, we got to care. You got to keep caring. Yeah. Human and we're rational. And we care about human life. Yeah. That, but I, I I I can't let that stop me. The fact that it, it it's it you know, and we have to keep moving forward. Otherwise. You know, I can't just give up. It, that's yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Hey, Ron. I'm so far away from what my first question was going to be. Now that uh, I'm up, so because well, everything go was, back to that. We can go back to that later. Yeah, everything was very interesting that, that was talked about. So let's talk about moral judgment of the leaders of israel and i mean you're you're very hard on them so let, let me challenge it and see what you think of the challenge like talking about getting really angry about something i get really angry when the media talks about israel committing war crimes or if they are committing war crimes it just it it's so wrong you know and so unjust but if you are a leader don't you need to account like is your attitude you're a leader you're it's up to you to not let that get to you and to do the right thing or or should they as rational human beings be accounting for the fact of this opposition to them that is so up that is so biased but that potentially has real harm to them you know like being charged with a war crime is a serious issue you know, being a leader means leading. It doesn't mean following. It means taking a stand, articulating why you're taking the stand, explaining to the world what is actually going on, and leading, not, you know, being influenced by the, the, the latest noise that, I don't know, Greta Thunberg or whoever is making out there. Uh, sorry, I, I I I see a video of Greta Thunberg on on Twitter right now. I'm I'm just trying to stay up to date on the news. So I've got Twitter running in the background. Um, I mean, you, you can't be you can't be swayed by these things. So they'll prosecute you for for war crimes. Fine, let them come after you. You know, you need to make you 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 are uh, uh, you now look. Uh, the reality is, and this is the reality, and maybe this is why I shouldn't be that harsh on the leaders. I'm harsh on the leaders to an extent that they don't lead, and they're not leading. Biden's not leading. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Netanyahu's not leading. Nobody's leading. There's no leadership here. And there's no articulation of the case. There's no sitting down and telling the world this is the way it is. And when there is, it, it, there's, there's that, and then and then the behavior doesn't match the words. It's complete. Uh, but... 
I mean, the real, the real, uh, uh, um, the real enemy, the real, uh, uh, you know, problem here is not a few, a few leaders. The real problem is the culture. Uh, you know, let's say Netanyahu decided he was going all in and, uh, you know, started bombing the hell out of Gaza and thousands were dying. And I mean, what would happen inside Israel? Never mind outside of Israel. I mean, Israeli society would go apoplectic and go nuts. So it's, it, it, you know, it's it, there is a sense in which it's impossible to lead people who do not want uh, reality and truth and, and their own self-defense. But I think it's incumbent on a leader to try to make the case and to to act. And then if they get kicked out of office because of it, so be it. But at least they made they took a shot. It, you know, it really is about leadership. If if um, I mean, it is interesting if if Churchill had asked the, the British people whether it was OK to flatten Dresden, I, I suspect they would have said yes. Um, but he didn't ask them. He just did it. If if Churchill would have told the British people, you know, here's what's at stake at Dunkirk. And I'm going to take this gamble. And if it fails, we've probably lost the war. Right. You know, he didn't. He, he, yeah. he did it. And then he gave that amazing speech about he led. Churchill was a leader. I mean, you could argue with certain of his decisions, um, but he led. He didn't wait for the rest of the world to catch up on him. Now, we live in a slightly different era with media and video and all this. We don't have leaders. We just don't have leaders. The only leader we have in the world today are the bad guys, like Putin is a leader, right? He didn't. He, he goes in and <laughs> he goes to crush Ukraine. I mean, yeah. he's a bad guy, but he's a, he's he's at least a leader. None of these people are leaders. They're all cowards. Um, you'll see the kind of pressure Israel comes under from the Biden administration once the ceasefire is over. It's going to be immense uh, in order to to stop and to consider a long term ceasefire, a ceasefire, and a political solution, and this and that, and you know, far from killing the guys in Qatar. They, I mean, the, the real question I think we need to think about is, will they kill the Hamas leadership in Gaza? It's not obvious to me that they will get them. It's not obvious to me that America will let them. Uh, and, and, and you know, we'd have to go into South Gaza with two million civilians, so-called civilians, uh, you know, in South Gaza. They've got no way to go. How are they going to blow up the tunnels? How are they going to get those leaders? How are going to catch them? How so uh, maybe I'm being too harsh on the leaders, but in a sense, that's just a proxy for the culture that elects them and votes them and loves them and supports them. <laughs>